Did you know that you can make one piece of art and then throw it into a game and make six figures from it? Wait, you can do what? That's exactly what went through my brain when I found out you can throw your art on a CS2 gun and then if it gets in game, you literally make bank. This kind of sounds too good to be true. Mm, yes, but hear me out, okay? The probability of your art getting in game is better odds than winning the lottery. And because I'm already a game dev artist and have experience putting art onto 3D objects, I'm pretty much an experienced novice. Okay, but do you even know how to add art to a CS2 model? Uh, no. But it can't be that hard, right? Today I am making my first CS2 skin and y'all are here for a ride. <laughs> so just to warn y'all, do not follow this video step by step because I'm probably going to be making a lot of mistakes. But how about this? The next video I make will be a full on tutorial step by step guide to make a CS2 skin. So enjoy the struggle bus of me making my first skin. Before we get started with anything. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I am a mobile gamer, okay? This is a legitimate reason as to why I do not have a Steam account. Okay, now that I've got Steam downloaded and CS2 downloaded, now come over here to the workshop resources that I found from a tutorial online where you can get the geometry. There it is, download it. And now we got them all. Now, there's a lot in this list, so I'm gonna have to pick which one I want. Over here is the stash. They have pistols, mid-tier rifles. I think, okay, full disclosure, the P90 is my all-time favorite gun, like if I had to pick one, because look how cute it is. Like, you see this? The curves? It's just adorable. But looking at the skins that are already in-game, they're kind of, eh? They don't really show off the cuteness of the P90, which is really sad. This one, this one's the closest, but not really. <sighs> it's disappointing. So I'm gonna do the P90 cause it's cute and it needs something cute to show off its cuteness. Now that I have all the files here, I'm just gonna drop the weapon SMG P90 OBJ into my uh, Google Drive. Why? Well, it's because I only have an iPad to draw with. So we're kind of limited in the software that I can use for this project. Now, I know you think that it's weird that a professional artist like myself only uses an iPad to draw with. And yes, I agree, it is a little weird. But I just haven't been able to justify buying a graphic tablet. My iPad works fine. Okay, so I've been playing around a little bit in Procreate and it turns out that you can actually import an image into Procreate onto your object. And then you can just scale and move it around. Also, if you hit projection and you hit bi-directional, it goes on the other side. Pretty cool, not gonna lie. So, which means that I don't have to draw everything in Procreate and I can actually use the app that I prefer to draw in, which is Adobe Fresco. I know you are wondering, why am I not using Procreate? Two reasons. The first, I recently just downloaded Procreate just so that I can paint on 3D models. Second is because there is no limit to the number of layers I have in Adobe Fresco. My reasoning is valid. I decided that I am going to make the most Janelle skin ever. So it's gonna have bright colors and everything I love in this design. You gotta be excited and happy when you're mowing down people with this SMG. So I am just gonna make a quick sketch of what I want this skin to look like. And I'm gonna go with a basic design I have done before, which is pretty much what I like to call either lava or water. Because I did this design for an album cover for the artist Stellar when he first released his hit song Ashes. And I also used the same design for a contest that was run by Red Bull F1 racing team. I put it on their Formula One car. So I'm thinking why not just use the same design that I've done before because I know it works and it looks good. It would be what I would want on a gun. And I'm also gonna add a skull, cause why not? And maybe add some bullets, cause that could be cool. No, it's not cool. A skull and some bullets, literally the most basic design you can come up with. Actually, you know what's better than a boring skull? A cute chick. More importantly, a cute alien girl chick. 
Now I'm gonna be drawing my original character Poppy because she is green and freaking adorable. And I'm gonna add some stars instead of the bullets. You know, because this stuff has stars in it, I'm just gonna call it space juice. And then with this pink, I'm actually gonna pick this green and then make it into a gradient. Uh, the green looks all right. Let's do blue. <laughs> okay, that's much better. And now that we have the sketch done, I was looking, I was looking pretty good. You know, let's clean it up and see what it would look like. <laughs> okay, so first I'm going to decrease the opacity and now I'm just gonna make a cleaner sketch version of this. And we make all the lava lines clean. Okay, so this is the final sketch and I'm pretty happy with it. It looks, it looks pretty cool. So now I'm just gonna take a nice clean brush that's fat and I am just going to ink everything. To be honest with you, I don't know why I made a cleaner sketch just to clean up that cleaner sketch. You know, sometimes I do things and you just gotta ignore the redundancies. The line art part is never my favorite because it takes so darn long and I have to be so precise. And now we do my fun part and my favorite part, adding the color. I'm just gonna make simple flat colors because I don't know exactly where I still want this to go. Okay, now that this is all done, I'm going to export the file. I'm gonna export it as a PNG so that when I come over to Procreate, I can just import by inserting a photo and then clicking it and scaling. Okay, so this is what the final image looks like. And um, it's safe to say it looks lame. So I really liked the original sketch. So I'm just gonna take the lines that I already have, just gonna make it cleaner as well as flowing more with the gun. Okay, that is a lot better, I think, I hope. Now I'm kind of stuck on what to put in the space juice because I don't like the portrait of Poppy, but I still want Poppy to be on the gun. So I'm gonna take a painting that I've already made of Poppy and just throw her on and see what that looks like. Doesn't really look bad right here. Like honestly, it might be smart to just do this design. And if I cleaned it up. What? Ain't nothing wrong with repurposing art. So I'm just gonna decrease the opacity and just start outlining. Now I'm gonna make these lines thinner than the backgrounds, but still make them nice looking. Okay, now that the lines are done, it's time to color. I'm just gonna fill in all the shapes. And there's a trick that I learned from a past video that I made copying an artist style Rhino Tuna. And I learned that if you select singular colors, so like say, like when I'm selecting the skin, and I just paint in that selection the colors that I already have, and I still keep that sharp look because of the lines while also keeping the same feeling of the original painting that I did of Poppy. Okay, now that the skin's done, I'm just gonna do that for everything else. Okay, with all this done, now I'm going to add color to the line art because I know I'm gonna color the line art for everything. And I don't like the stars that I made for the previous version, so I'm gonna take this illustration that I did of Space Boba from like a couple months ago. And because I have all the layers separated, I'm just gonna take out my stars and I'm just gonna clean these babies up. Saving time, people. And I don't really like these planets that I did either. So I think I'm just gonna also take the eyeballs from the boba and use those instead. Okay, and now that I have all the assets, I'm just gonna export them all individually as transparent PNGs. That way, when I go back into Procreate, I can just throw them on and arrange them. Work smarter, not harder. That is my life motto. I'm gonna pick my line art and then rescale, move it around, make sure it looks good. And now I'm just gonna project it with the bi-directional. And I do the same with the color for the space juice. And I clean these parts up because like clearly it's not lining up. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna slap Poppy in, in her correct position. And then I'm gonna add my little star and another star. I'm gonna import eyeball and I import another eyeball. And now we need unicorns. I'm going to now add in the blue gradient, just like so. I have to like get all of the angles. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the line art. 
You know what? Not bad. Okay, so because some of these parts are, they look weird, because like in this area, it's kind of like merged. So I'm gonna have to clean this up and make sure it looks nice. So I'm gonna do that for everything. <laughs> Because we don't want no crusty looking designs. Okay, perfect. And now we have this blank spot on the butt of the gun. So I'm just going to import the star. Because, you know, why not? And then rearrange him, make sure he looks nice and cute. And I'm going to add a new layer. And we are going to add some space juice behind him. Fill him some color and do the gradient. And now this dude is a space juice shooting star. And now I gotta do the same with the top because it's blank. So I'm gonna add this unicorn dude, make sure he fits in nice. And I'm gonna draw in some lines behind him because he's gonna be pooping space juice. Because why not? Okay, so now I need to add some of the space juice that goes on top because I want the stuff that is in the space juice to look like it's like flowing with it. So I'm just gonna do some little areas down over here and draw some lines in. Now I want to add sparkles because if this is the skin that I want in game, it has to have sparkles. I have a custom brush that I made and I ended up importing it into Procreate before doing everything because I knew, I knew I was gonna use this brush. Apparently you can make properties with brushes on Procreate, so I made a metallic version where when I paint with it, it's shiny! Okay, cool. I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. It's a sparkly and it looks cool. So, we're gonna take this and I'm just gonna export it. Okay, so now that I've exported and downloaded the files onto my PC, Let's throw this into Blender and see what it looks like. Now I'm in a Blender right now. What will be there? Noise. Here's, here's our baby. I'm just gonna go over to the top up here and push this button. And look, we got our skin. Okay, so this is still pixelated like what it was in Procreate, which I was hoping that it would fix it in Blender because I thought it was just a Procreate thing. It's more than a procreate problem. It's it's a me problem. <laughs> okay, so this took a little bit for me to figure out and I had to go onto a procreate forum, like a Q&A and figure out why my stuff was pixelated. And it was because procreate doesn't import 4K automatically. You kind of have to do it yourself. So I had to do everything in Blender and fix it. And let's just say it was a pain and absolutely miserable, but here we are. So I had a hard time figuring out how to make the OBJ 4K and I was traumatized to say the least. But I figured it out and here it is in Procreate and it looks the same as my 2K. And that's because I had to do some magic. So I kind of already have a guideline to use. So while I'm importing, I can just put it on top and hope for the best. I'm gonna have to do everything all over again. Well, it's a good thing I'm learning this now instead of putting this in the workshop and finding out way later. So, <laughs> this could be worse. Okay, now that this is finally done and it's in 4K and it looks cool and it's got all the sparkles that I want, I can now export it. Okay, so now that I have all of my PNG files, in order for these maps to be used, apparently, according to the internet, you have to convert them from PNG to a TGA file. So. We're gonna do that. Okay, so I've already put in my files and I'm just gonna go file, save and copy, and then go down to the TGA file. And then print save. I'm gonna do 32-bit, okay. And then I just do the same for the other ones. Okay, so now that I have these TGA files, I can now open up the workshop. I workshop tools. Lunch. Okay, so the workshop is really boring to look at. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do a custom paint job. And then we gotta select the weapon, P90. So it looks like you put in a file work path directory. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna click this and look at open up. That's Mars. 
Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop my color file here. Then we're going to copy the file and then just paste it in. Nice. Now let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to hit inspect. Okay. There's like this weird black like areas where like my skin isn't covered on the gun. Everything else looks fine. There isn't anything wrong with this. What is going on? Okay, so after looking it up, I found out that the reason why there are these black parts is because it all depends on the alpha map. And the alpha map is like, determines what part of the gun is worn versus factory new. So, I'm gonna go back into Photoshop and I'm gonna hit the channels and I'm gonna hit this plus button. So now I've got the alpha here. Now the problem is, I don't know what parts of the gun that needs to be filled. <laughs> we gotta kind of go back into Procreate. Okay, so after a little bit, I figured out what areas needed to be fixed for the alpha. And so I kind of filled these in and then I exported a copy and I imported the parts that needed to be factory new. So I'm gonna go up here and select in color range. I'm gonna hit the white and press OK. And then I'm just gonna go back to my alpha. I'm just gonna paint everything else as gray, which is just 65%. Okay, and now that we have this, and now we're just gonna export again. Okay, now we gotta go back into workshop and... Okay, so now I'm just gonna drag it and replace. Perfect. So now, because it's the same file, I'm just gonna hit inspect. Nice! I fixed it. Okay, now that we have the color, let's add a roughness map. So let's move our roughest map button here and inspect. And this looks the same, so I don't know what's going on. So apparently in CS2, roughness determines how shiny or reflective the part on the skin is, which was news to me. Which means that if you want to make something that's not shiny, you make it white. To make it shiny, you use black. Weird, but okay. Okay, so apparently you can't use the metallic and roughness map from Procreate. They're just, it's just not gonna show up. I am going to have to get rid of these two because I don't need them. And instead, I'm going to go back into Procreate and separate all of these little parts so that I can individually add the texture that I need to them. Okay, now that I have these, I'm just going to export them individually. Okay, so now that I have imported all of the textures onto my computer, I'm just going to drag them. Okay, so now that we've got all of the isolated things, <laughs> I can now make my roughness map. Okay, so for the roughness map, black is shiny and white is not. So I want the space juice and my character art to be black. No, I want them to be white. <laughs> white. Okay. So these are the main sparkles. So these ones, I want to make sure that they're black. It's still black. Okay. Cool. So this is the roughness map now. And then now we go back to the workshop and now we inspect. Okay, so you know what? I think I put the layers wrong. This kind of looks cool. That's a cool texture, but that's not what we want. Oh, I know what it was. I didn't put this on top. Okay, now let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's more like it. So this isn't reflective at all. Where are my sparkles? This is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I ultimately gave up on figuring out how to make my skin shiny and metallic. But then I found out that actually you can. You just have to use gunsmith and not the custom paint. Okay, so because I can't make this shiny, I can at least make the sparkles change color. So let's do that instead. So I'm gonna go back to Photoshop. Okay, so for the pearlescent map, black is no color change and white is color change. 
Perfect. Okay, let me go back to workshop and use pearlescent mask. Now let's see what this looks like. Ew. That's kind of cool. <laughs> what if the the space juice was what changed colors? Back to Fairy Sheriff. We need this. This is what we need. Delete. And then lock this. And then make it white. Yeah. Perfect. Replace. Nice. Okay. Now let's see what this looks like. What? Okay, this this is kind of magical. Why does this look so cool? Okay, now I'm actually getting excited. This is the way we're gonna go. Okay, the only thing now that I see with this is um this right here. I don't know what this is. National. It doesn't look like it's on the actual model, so I'm thinking it's a UV map or what is it called? A normal map, which I think they have in the workshop. Yes, they do. Nice. Okay, so we are gonna make a normal map. <laughs> okay, filter, 3D. There we go. Generate normal map. Okay, so I don't like how this goes in, so I'm gonna see if I can invert this. Invert. Nice. Okay. Air and then paint to it. Okay, and now we try again. Okay, I think I'm gonna do a subtle one. Yeah, because I don't want this to be like popping out too much. Okay, cool. Let's export this. Yes. And now let's see. Oh, that's cool. And it got rid of the, the weird thing that was there. But the only thing is, if you're gonna hold the gun like this, like the color looks not what I would want. So I think we gotta fix the colors in. And because we have this, I'm gonna select this because this is what we wanna change the colors for. Turn this off and then I'm just gonna make an adjustment layer. So hue saturation. Oh, I could change the color. And let's try this and see if that fixes the weird color change. Okay, that actually looks a lot better and I like because now it's pink and blue, how I would want it to be. Okay. Okay, this is good. This is good. Now we inspect. Nice. Okay. Okay, the colors look so much better. But when I zoom in, y'all, what? Look, it, it's like pixelated and the colors are not what they're supposed to be. Pixel bleeding colors. So it's either something with the pearlescent map or it could be my colors. Like maybe those need to be cleaned up. I don't know. So we're gonna try both. So I pretty much spent the whole day cleaning up the colors, making sure that the art was nice and crispy. So I made it all nice and clean. Like there should be nothing wrong. I also cleaned up the pearlescent map too. And we're gonna inspect again. Okay, so it is not fixed. It's still pixelated. I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is unacceptable. So at this point, I was panicking and I was looking through a bunch of forums trying to figure out how to fix this pixelization bleed color thing. Until a week later, someone posted this on Reddit which pretty much confirmed my suspicions that it wasn't a me problem, it was a CS2 problem. So I actually could have had my skin submitted way sooner and had this video done and uploaded way sooner. Okay, so it's been a week and I pretty much could have submitted my skin by now. The last thing I need to do in order for the skin to be submitted is to make some promo art and a promo video. Okay, so I recorded some footage of my skin and I also took some screenshots to use. I think I'm gonna use these and drag them in. So I am just going to remove the background on all of them. Okay, now that we've got all these dudes by themselves, we need to make a nice background for these. So I found two textures, this one and this one, that I'm going to use to turn into a really cool background. 
Okay, backgrounds acquired. I need to make the guns look nice because the art is still pixelated and pixelated art is no bueno. And because I am a genius at Photoshop, I'm just gonna fix it. <laughs> okay, so I fixed everything up and now they look nice. I need to make a logo. And I'm going to type in space. Jess. Now that we've got this, I'm gonna come over here and grab my custom font that I made. It's in my handwriting. Ain't that fancy. You've probably seen my custom type all throughout this video. It's kind of like I'm my own brand with my own special typography. Okay, so we fixed the letters, made it look kind of cool. And now I'm gonna add some, some streaks. Okay, nice. And now that we have that, I think this looks pretty good. There's another thing that I wanna put in and that is this QR code. Always add your name or links to any piece of art or image you make and are posting online. That way, one, you get the credit for the stuff that you make. And two, for image collectors like me, I can be able to go and find more of your stuff. Okay, now let's grab the other dudes and lay them out so they look nice. And then let's add some drop shadows. First one, done. Okay, so now I'm gonna make an animation with these. Okay, so I made a selection, like masking out everything else. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the adjustments and look, it changes color. Okay, so I increased them each by 10 for the hue and then merged. So I have all of these that will change color. So now I'm gonna go up to my window and then go to timeline. And then now I can select all of these and make them into an animation. Okay, perfect. Now that we've got this, let's just see. Noise, it changes color. Now let's go to and export this as a GIF. Export, uh, save for web legacy. Okay. 1920 by 1080. And save. Now we have an animation that's a GIF. Cool. <laughs> now you know how to make a quick GIF in Photoshop. You're welcome. Okay, so I finished making the video. So let's go back into the workshop and submit the scheme. Okay, with this, now we just do publish. Okay, and I need to find a thumbnail for this. And I actually, I don't like this one that I've made because I don't think that's going to show it off very well. So I'm going to go and make a new one. Okay, that's a new thumbnail. I need to make a description of what I want to say. Okay, so I also found that you can copy and paste in your GIFs into the description. So I ended up doing that. So now let's submit the skin. Okay, so now I'm going to open it onto my community tab. And it looks like the GIFs do not work and they're just a link. So we got to fix that. So I'm going to go to edit title and description. And I'm going to add this HTML code in front and behind because that was the part I was missing. So it's the weird parentheses and then IMG. And then at the end of the link, you just do the same thing, but with a slash after or before the IMG. And then you just do that for all of them. Okay, and now we go back to the item and noise, they're right there. That's cool. Okay, so now I need to add more images than just the thumbnail. So let's fix that real quick. I'm gonna choose files. Fun fact, I had to change the dimensions for all of these because apparently you have a two megabyte limit and I'm notorious for making big files. So I had to shrink all of these. Save and continue. This is pretty good. Okay, nice. I think I think I'm happy with this. This it looks pretty professional. I'm I'm proud of myself. <laughs> okay, so it's been a couple days since I submitted my skin. So let's look at the insides on my skin. Let's see. New item stats. 
139. Not bad. Hey, look. 50%. 54% like it. 45 don't. <laughs> and one person will like ask me later. Yeah, not bad. Honestly, um, I'm not surprised that the results were kind of 50-50 on liking it and not liking it and that's just because i'm someone that likes art on skins whereas there's probably other people who prefer a more less art based and more design based if that makes any sense do i think my skin will get in game probably not but was it fun yes it was very fun and it's a cool portfolio piece and now that i kind of know how to make a skin i can make more faster there's that a reminder that the next video that I upload will be a beginner-friendly tutorial on everything you need to know to make your very own CS2 skin. So subscribe if you want to have a higher chance of getting your skin into game. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.